YouTube, Joe Bassett here from Valiant Outfitters for another Wilderness Wednesday. We're going to continue on here in our backyard base camp working on our tri-stick. This week we're going to get to the ends of our tri-stick. Now on the Morse Kohansky tri-stick, on one end you do a point like you would do for a tent stake or for the part of a spindle on your bow drill that's going to go up into the bearing block. On the other end, he would do a root stripper, something that you would use to make cordage. For ours, we're going to use a different technique down here to do something completely different because we feel that making your own cordage, that's more of an advanced technique. Remember, this is a beginner's tri-stick, something for you to learn the basic carving skills. I'm going to use that long dowel that I got from our friends up at Home Depot or Lowe's, and I can tuck it up under my arm to keep it secure while I'm practicing. Of course, if I were working on a tent stake or a spindle for a bow drill, it would be much shorter than this, but I'm practicing these techniques. We're gonna start at this end with a chamfer or a crowning. We're just taking off a very little bit up at the end of the dowel with our knife. I'm using my trusty Mora knife companion here. Not an expensive knife, but does the job. It's a great entry to level knife. To learn our technique, much like we did with making a feather stick, I'm going to take my time. And I'm going to lay that blade flat. Then I'm going to tip it up until I feel that edge. That's all I want to start with. These are very small moves that I'm making. I want to take my time so that I learn the edge of my knife. Of course, every time I get a new knife, I go through these exercises to get to understand the knife. Every knife is unique. Even two Mora Knife Companions are going to be different from each other in some ways of the grind of that edge. Much like with the feather stick and most of our other carving skills, I don't want to hack away at the wood. I want to think of a slicing motion, taking my time. So, I'm going to lay that blade flat, tip up until I feel the edge, and then just take a tiny little bit off of the edge. And then I'm going to do more, and I'm going to slowly rotate that dowel. And I'm going to reset each time until I'm really comfortable with the grind of the knife. You can see that I'm just making tiny little slicing motions, taking very fine and short and small pieces of wood off. Just tiny little shavings, not even really pieces. It helps if you angle the knife a little bit. Rather than coming straight in, if you angle a little bit, it helps with that slicing motion. Taking a slice, rotating. Taking a slice, rotating. And you're really only rotating very small movements. I've gone pretty far down on this crown to demonstrate how far I might want to go down if I'm doing a spindle for a bow drill. But this also will work for the end of that tent stake coming down this far. And, and you can see coming around that it's less that dowel that way and keep circling until I've reduced this, I would say, by one third to one half. So we've gotten to the chamfered end, we've reduced that, and now if I'm using it as a tent stake and I hammer down into that, it's not going to mushroom out on me, it's not going to flare out on me. Or that's what I can use to burn in to my hearthboard on my bow drill. On the other end, I'm going to use a very similar technique, but I want it to be much longer. I would even say go one, two, three, three knife blades for this particular knife, but that's going to change depending on the knife that you're using and also how you're going to try to be making your tent stake. And we're going to be taking material off to get down to a very fine point. To start, use a very similar technique to what we did for the chamfer. I'm going to put it down flat and just tip onto that edge and take small slices off and go around. 
rather than starting all the way back here and making these big slices, what this is going to do for me is it's going to start down towards a point for me. So when I back up and I take off those larger slices, the longer slices, it's going to work down towards a point for me rather than trying to gouge into the wood. Now, as I work on this point end, I've had the shorter shavings that I've taken off. And once I've been all the way around, I'm going to come back a little bit further now, maybe one, two lengths of my blade. And I'm going to start taking off larger portions. Again, if I lose that edge, come in flat and then tip over until I feel where that edge is. As I feel where that edge is and I learn it better and I start to come back more, I can take larger shavings off and continue to slice and come around. After I've established how far back I want that point to start, where I want the shoulder to be, and the shoulder is from where I come from the flat part of the dowel down into the point. I can come back to the edge and shave off again and bring that diameter down even smaller. You can see I'm becoming more aggressive with the knife now. And if I need to, reset, find that edge, and do it again. Once I've established this part of the point, again, I can come back up and start to trim out a little bit. Fight the urge to come back and then go this way and come back and go this way. Keep rotating. Once you pick your way of rotation, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, keep going with that. You can continue on until you have the point as sharp as you want it. If you need to dress it up a little bit, you can come out towards the curve of your blade, curve of your edge, and just make some really fine adjustments to it. Especially if you need it super pointy, if you're going to use it to harvest protein, uh, such as a spear for fish. Tent stake, I'm not going to be nearly as sharp down here as I would be for a spear. And of course, for um, the bearing block of my bow drill, I don't need it to be quite as sharp. It's going to wear out anyway. Also, I can adjust this depending on the soil that I have. Uh, here in Florida, it's very soft soil. So I can go with a sharper edge so I can manually push that tent peg down in. If it's a bit more uh, dense soil, I might have it a little bit more rounded so they can take more blunt force trauma. This end where I did my camphor or my um, crowning, that's much easier, not as much work. But I start with this end when I'm learning my technique because the technique here translates over to here. This is Joe Bassett for Valiant Outfitters. There's the tri-stick. We're not complete yet, but two more carving skills to add to it. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button. Also the subscribe button, notification button. We'll see you back another time for another Wilderness Wednesday.